All righty. So again, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Um, first things first. Uh, what is SciFit and uh, how did it come about? First of all, it is SCIFit, and um, we are basically integrated therapy of uh, rehabilitation for spinal cord injuries and other neurological disorders, where we're trying to blend the post traditional physical therapy with. Um, basically like personal training. So a combination of bridging the gap of that traditional um, therapy and making it kind of non-traditional. Um, it started by Daniel Dumas. He was in Hawaii and actually had a spinal cord injury. Um, he was a C-level quadriplegic. And once he found out or once the incident happened, the doctor basically told him he was never going to walk again and this was his life to get used to it and he did not like that answer um, so he took it upon himself him and his wife Annabelle uh, went down to a place in SoCal where he did intensive therapy um, and you know that was his life to dedicate himself to get better to prove people wrong that this was not his life and today he is now walking with um, crutches um, so once that happened, he when he regained function, um, they were from the Bay Area and they knew there was nothing like that up here. So they wanted to bring that type of intensive therapy to help others like him and his circumstances. Um, so they opened SCI Fit back in 2007. Um, from there, we now have four locations and soon to be five. We are now expanding out of state to Arizona and we hope that we can continue expanding within the years to help others in that situation. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about some of the services that you provide at SCI Fit. Yeah, so we just hired a physical therapist. So we do have a physical therapist on staff at the Dublin location. Our goal is to eventually have a physical therapist at all locations to help bring in more clients who financially cannot afford it. Um, we do provide one-on-one -on -one training with each individual um, client that comes into our doors. We also have other pieces of equipment like the Locomat, which is an exoskeleton based over a treadmill um, where we're able to set a specific gait pattern to the individual where they're going to get that perfect um, heel to toe strike and build that neuroplasticity through repetition. Um, we also have um, different things like that where we're having a harness to assist over the treadmill to get, again, that neuroplasticity, that repetition for uh, gait training. Um, we also have what we call the Amadeo. That is a hand robotic device where we're able to work on the fingers flexion and extension to help through range of motion for people who have that tone and spasticity and to potentially get that, again, um, increased range of motion through that repetition. We also use a lot of services like FES, NMES, which is functional electrical stimulation and neuromuscular stimulation, where we utilize that through our training sessions. We have what we call the Excite system, where we're able to set electrodes on the specific muscles to perform a certain task, such as, for example, if we wanted our client to work on um, brushing their teeth. We're able to set those electrodes on those desired muscles and it would fire as if the person was doing that movement. So we utilize a lot of that during our sessions on the floor. We also have available um, FES spikes for our clients to come and use um, whenever they want. Um, that is also another thing where we're able to set the electrodes on their um, leg muscles. So your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your tibs and or glutes where they're able to get that sequential pattern as if they were riding a bike. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me a little, um, what, what do you guys have to look for when considering what, um, what's best for like a patient? How, what sorts of tools and strategies do you have to use to like make sure that they become as independent as possible? Everyone who comes into our doors, we do a evaluation. Um, where we're able to meet with the individual and we um, assess them where they tell us kind of their goals, um, short term and long term, we take that into consideration. And then once we um, assess them, then we're able to set kind of a program on what we believe is best for them and how we can achieve those goals. Um, 
So for example, if someone wants to be able to roll over in bed, right? We know the specific muscles in order to do that. That's what we would target during our programming, which would be a lot of core exercises, obliques, um, posterior chain work, back work. Um, we would also um, use what we do in our program. We have five main components that we go off of. Every client that comes in here will get some sort of active range of motion where we're able to get that mind-body connection. Again, we're dealing with clients who don't have sensation and they are um, paralyzed. So we believe that mind-body connection is a huge part of recovery. So we'll do um, active range of motion where we'll coach our clients through to um, use tactile cues to get something to fire as if they're performing the actual movement, as well as mobility and stretching. We we'll believe that is huge with our clientele and population. Um, we're able to, you know, work on those stiffer muscles, that tone and spasticity, try to break that stuff down. Um, we'll get them some sort of load bearing, whether that be through standing, kneeling, um, using standing frames, um, freestanding, depending on the client's abilities. We will get some sort of gait training, whether that be through our har harness assisted treadmills and or um, overground walking using forearm walkers, normal walkers or rift ins. Um, we will get some sort of FES, um, the functional electrical stimulation, and we'll get functional um, exercises, what we can work on to help someone in their everyday life, as well as developmental movement patterns, um, the basis from when someone started as a kid, right? Rolling, crawling, kneeling, um, up to standing and walking. So that's kind of how we base our program. Mm-hmm. My next question is, what kind of what kind of impact does your work at uh, SciFit have on the Raider community and like in general? I would say, I mean, in the community, it has a great impact because it allows our clients to have a guess, a safe place. Um, we are a family and everyone who walks in our doors, we greet them with hellos. Everyone who leaves these doors, we greet that where I say goodbye. It's definitely a family atmosphere. We try to do things outside with our clients, whether it be like going to the zoo or having dinners or movie nights. Um, and also just creating that sense of they feel comfortable coming here and they feel safe. Mm -hmm. That's That was literally my last question, which is like, how do you create a um, sort of safe and inclusive environment for people with um, disabilities? Because oftentimes people with disabilities don't often have um, the tools or the resources to, um, you know, become as independent um, as possible. So I'm wondering uh, what's your um, view on that, take on that? Yeah, I mean, we believe that our biggest and number one rule is safety. Um, we make sure that everything we do with our clients is safe, that we pay attention to the smallest details down to how the toes are lying, how um, things are with the individual. The moment they come in this door, um, we make sure they leave the same way they came in. Um, I think just communication is the biggest thing. We try to communicate with them as best as we can to say, hey, like we got you um, to build that trust. And that's the most important thing is once you build the trust with the clients, um, again, they believe in you and you're able to, I guess, challenge them in ways they maybe have not felt safe before. And once they build that safe space, I think it's um, it just kind of goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool.